Hiya, this is the second video for the examples from lesson two. Um, for more differentiating the trig functions. That's cool. So we did, last lesson we did... Well, last lesson, last video, we did page six. So now I'm just going to do page seven of a booklet. This is quite nice because we did this one in the first lesson. So if I put y equals sine x over cos x, so f of x is sine x, f dashed of x is cos x, g of x is cos x, g dashed of x is minus sine x. So that's all getting ready now to use with the quotient rule. So dy by dx, so it's f dashed of x, uh, where are we, f dashed of x, g of x, cos x, cos x, minus g dashed of x, f of x, minus sine x, oops, sine x, all over g of x all squared, oops, cos x all squared. I'm rushing this because we've done it before dy by dx, so I've got cos squared x plus sine squared x all over cos squared x. Once again, as I mentioned last time, anything you use, just write it down. Just signpost the examiner so it's just not a massive numbers and letters. So dy by dx is 1 over cos squared x. Once again using secant x is 1 over cos x. Um, I'll do it here actually. dy by dx is secant squared x. Right, that's fairly straightforward. That's good for us. Right, part two says find the equation of a tangent, y equals tan x, when x is pi by 4. Right, so in terms of a plan, I need a gradient. So I need dy by dx evaluated when x is pi by 4. And I need y when x is pi by 4. And then I'm just going to put it into y minus y1 is m x minus x1. Right then, let's have a look. Uh, we'll do a gradient first. So dy by dx is it's secant squared of pi by 4. So you can't do that in your calculator. So I've got to see it as 1 over cos squared of pi by 4. I think the cos of pi by 4 is a half, so when you, no sorry, it's 1 over root 2, so when you square it, it's 1 over 2, but you've flipped it, so that gives us 2, I think, top of my head. Uh, for y, I've got y equals tan of pi by 4, so that's easier, that, that's just 1. So I'm going to use, where are we, pi by 4, comma 1, and a gradient of 2. So I've got y minus 1, uh, pi by 4, is equal to 2 lots. Oh, no, no, it isn't. Stupid, 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 stupid. y minus 1 is 2 lots of x minus pi by 4. Job, job. It doesn't say in any other form, so just leave it like that. Right, let's have a look. Uh, next question. So when we drew the graphs in the first lesson, the only reason we could kind of compare like for like with a gradient was because we were in radians. The scaling works quite nice because if you think of a scale like a one-to-one -one scale between plus or minus one and 360, it's massive. Whereas a one-to-one, -one, like a, a plus one to minus one on the y, going from naught to two pi to six and a bit, it's a lot easier to cope with. So what we need to do is change it over into radians. So this is in degrees, so if you remember, to change something from degrees to radians, you have to divide by 180 and times by pi. So my y equals cos of, so I'm going to change the x into that. So, But I'm going to put it as pi over 180 times by x. Then you're happy 
that the pi over 180 is just a constant. So when I differentiate it using the chain rule in my head, that constant is just going to go to the front. So if I differentiate it, dy by dx is, I know cos goes to minus sine of pi by 180, lots of x. I need to put that number in there, pi over 180, there. And that's it differentiated, but I'll show you a real common mistake with these. So you know it's minus, you know it's minus sine, and you know the pi by 180 needs to go at the front. Loads of people will put that, and that is not the same. This here is minus pi over 180 times by it. Whereas this is pi over 180, take away. So please don't fall into that trap of doing that. Right, I think that's those done. Yep, that's brilliant. So have a, well, well we're not going to have a go. Are you going to do it in class? So well done. Bye-bye.